Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so we're back with our uh, second video in our Q&A series. Um, this time I'm gonna go through and try and answer all the questions that you guys had in the previous video. And you guys had a lot of good questions. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, I really like seeing that you guys were watching the video and leaving the questions. And uh, for the next video, we are gonna do a part three also. So for the next video, if you guys have any other questions too, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section. I'll definitely try and get to them, okay? We're gonna try and do this video every one to two weeks. So if you guys want me to answer questions, comment section below and I'll definitely try and get to them, okay? Um, so for this video, let's go ahead and get to it and let's start answering the questions. Alright guys, so I got all the questions up here uploaded on my phone um, and you know there's some pretty good questions on there and first off thanks for all the questions um, and also you know I definitely got a good laugh out of all the, the comments about my hair and whatnot, um, all in good fun, thanks for those too. Uh, but let's get to it. So uh, the first question is from Alexandra M. She said, I got a piercing from you years ago, which is awesome, um, and you provide a small plastic bag or two of sea salt. What brands do you recommend slash would you ever plan on selling it on your site? Uh, first off, they are on the website. Um, just go to the aftercare section. They're, they're all there. Um, we definitely have the, the non-iodized sea salts. Otherwise, as far as at the grocery store, um, getting them on your own, there's a million brands out there. Um, just make sure it's non-iodized or it says this salt does not contain iodine. Same thing. Um, you should be able to read the ingredients list and it, it should just have sea salt on there, okay? So, Alexandra, thank you for that. All right, so the next question is from Camille Turner. She says, I have a question. I had my nose pierced almost a month now and the nose ring keeps falling out. Is it safe to change it to a surgical steel nose stud since it's not properly healed? Um, Camille, yes, it's definitely safe to change it to a surgical steel nose stud. Um, I would always recommend upgrading your, your jewelry to a better metal. Um, you know, so if you have anything less than a surgical steel, which you shouldn't have, then you should put in a surgical steel to heal with. Um, if your nose ring is constantly falling out also, then maybe your ring wasn't bent properly and you should probably get a better fitted ring that is bent more properly for your healing situation, okay? Uh, and it's, it's better to change that nose ring once than have it constantly fall out and have to constantly put it back in there. Um, so go see your, your local professional here so they should be able, help, be able to help you out with that no problem, okay? Um, Camille, thanks for the question also. Uh, next one is from Simone Mellon. Question, got my ears pierced about a month ago with 16 gauge jewelry. How do I know when I'm ready to stretch? Um, Simone, your piercing is so small at a 16 gauge, I would say you're pretty safe to stretch that in a month. Um, so as long as a month's time has gone by, you can stretch up. Um, when you start getting to the bigger sizes, um, a month is a good like safe uh, amount of time to kind of gauge it off of. But for the most part, if your plug, uh, if you can't pull that flare through your ear, then you're not ready to go for the go to the next size. But uh, a month is a month to two months, but usually a month is pretty good. But since you're only at a 16 gauge, as long as a month's go gone by, you can go to that 14 gauge really, really easily, no problem, okay? Um, Shelmuth Winda, <laughs> I think I said that right, says, hey, question, which is more prone to infection between nose and tongue piercing? Um, I wouldn't say either one of them is more prone. I mean, tongues are definitely really, really easy to heal. Um, your body just puts a lot of attention to healing those mucus oral piercings uh, really quickly. Um, but as long as you're doing the proper aftercare on both of them, uh, you should be able to heal both of them, you know, relatively easily. Uh, I've seen problems arise with either one, with both of those piercings, you know. Uh, so just do your proper proper aftercare, you know, which is going to be for the nose, saltwater soaks, for the tongue, saltwater rinses, and you shouldn't ha really have any problems with either one of them. As long as you got the proper jewelry, it was pierced properly, you should be good to go. So I wouldn't stress uh, infection with either one of those as long as you do everything correctly. All right. Um, Next, next one, here we go, we got from Frost Gage. It says, hey man, hope I get a response video, but I'm an apprentice for just piercings at a tattoo shop. I've been there for about six months. I was wondering if it would be possible to make a separate video giving you as much information on every piercing possible, your recommendations on cleaning and what, should, what I should recommend to clients that get infections and or torn piercings. Shop has been torn down for relocation for a couple months, so now that's why I'm here asking. So whenever the shop is open, I feel better with how I'm learning is going. Um, Frost Gage, so uh, I would love to make a video on everything, you know, that you ask. I do have a lot of videos already up. You're welcome to go through the, the history or check out our channel and check them all out. Um, I have a aftercare video on most all the piercings, but we're going to try and get more up there on, on the ones we don't have. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to work on that for you and try and get even more out there for you guys, okay? 
Um, so yeah, Frost, thanks again for the, for the comment, or the, the question. All right, the next one is Ariel Anita. Ariel, uh, can saltwater soaks relieve a keloid? I think I have a keloid on my inner lip and around my Medusa piercing, but I'm not sure. It doesn't hurt, and I'm not quite sure when it developed. Um, let's see, well, can saltwater, yes, yeah, saltwater soaks can definitely, definitely help, and that's probably the number one like thing I would recommend to a client to, uh, to do if they're having some, some like a keloid problem. Um, but they're only gonna help if you have the proper jewelry in there, you have a, your, your piercing is pierced properly, and you're doing the proper aftercare, um, which is usually saltwater soaks. Uh, you know, but I, mean, I guess when I say you're doing the proper aftercare, you're not doing something like putting hydrogen peroxide or alcohol or neosporin or any of that stuff on there. Um, so yeah, saltwater soaks will definitely, definitely help. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Otherwise, if you're not seeing any results, go to your piercer and see what they can take, have them take a look at it and see if they can help you with that at all, okay? Um, Ivy Ritter, my professional piercer recommended Bactine. I've been to three different shops and they all recommend to do it. How do I know what's best to do? Uh, everything we go off of at my shop is, is whatever the APP recommends, which is the Association of Professional Piercers, and they definitely um, stand firmly against not using Bactine. Um, so just saltwater soaks. I definitely, definitely strictly recommend only saltwater soaks. Okay, and if you don't believe me, go ahead and look at safepiercing.org, it's the APP's website and you can, look at, you can look it up for yourself. Um, that's what all piercers should be going by. Um, so yeah, check out safepiercing.org and, and they can kind of back up what I'm telling you right now, okay? Um, Mimi Carter, can you give some advice and tips on high nostril piercings? Ooh, high nostril piercings, I love high nostril piercings, um, but they're definitely a little bit harder to heal. The only advice and tips I can give you is uh, make sure you have a really qualified piercer doing for you and make sure you have the proper jewelry um, and make sure the placement's good and uh, I mean, I guess, man, I guess a lot of stuff actually just be up to having up to your piercer. So just make sure you get a really good piercer to do it for you. That's, you know, you do your research, um, see if you have any like APP certified piercers in your area. Uh, and, and yeah, just make sure whoever's doing it knows what they're doing. That's the best advice I can give you on that, you know. Um, Abby Carmona, what are your favorite headphones or earbuds who are piercing, such as Rooks, Doc, Tragus, etc.? Oh man, that's a crazy question. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say there's really one brand in particular, you know, when it all boils down to it, they're all kind of the same thing. So just, if you are gonna wear earbuds and stuff like that with, with those piercings, um, maybe hold off while the piercings are healing because use your jewelry is a little bit longer. And then once the piercing's healed, downsize that jewelry so it's more fitted and those earbuds should fit in there really, really easily. Um, but there isn't really one particular brand that I've seen that works the best. Uh, just, you know, just, Wait till the piercings are healed, downsize your jewelry, and then you shouldn't really have a problem with earbuds and stuff like that. But just know, while piercings are healing, they're not the most piercing friendly things to, to uh, wear in your ears, okay? All right, now we got uh, Melanie Ramirez. I got my nose pierced just about three weeks ago, and I've never had crust or dry blood or anything like that. Is that normal? Um, yeah, that's totally normal. Um, some people's bodies just, you know, you're just not gonna see that. You know, if your piercing's done really well, you got really good jewelry, uh, and you're taking really good care of it, um, yeah, I wouldn't sweat it. I mean, it doesn't mean your piercing's healed. Uh, your piercing's still gonna take like two to three months to heal on that one, but uh, you're just one of the lucky few that is just having no problems and no symptoms whatsoever, symptoms of healing, even though it is still healing, okay? Cool. Um, here we go, Kendall Brown. I got my conch pierced six months ago with a stud and I'm still unable to downsize it. How can I help the swelling go down? Um, you know, it's hard to say. I'd have to see your, your conch piercing in person. Uh, so if you have a local piercer in your area that is qualified and, and you trust, go check, go, go down and ask them and see what they say. But usually, uh, I would look into like what kind of jewelry you have in there. Like it's a really low grade piece of jewelry. Uh, the placement is the angle off. Um, usually like cheap jewelry or, or, or bad angles can cause, you, you know, your piercing to swell a lot and not want to go, go back down. Um, also, if you're like sleeping on a bunch or bumping and knocking all the time or using harsh cleaner. Um, so just, you know, that's a really tough one to answer without seeing the piercing in person. Um, so if you have a local piercer in your area, go talk to them and see what they can, they can recommend and have them take a look at it, okay? All right, Michaela Bree. My question is, can I get my septum pierced and then flip it up right away and keep flipping it up the whole healing process? Well, I want my septum pierced, but I don't have it showing for work for five days a week. Okay, so Michaela, um, 
I'm always going to recommend you to pierce your septum and wear it or, or don't flip it up during the healing process because you have a scab in there. If you're constantly flipping it up and pulling it down, you're just like picking out a scab. So if you can, you can get it pierced, flip it up, and maybe just leave it up. Leave it up during the whole healing process. Um, and then once it's healed, you can flip it up and down. Healing on those guys usually takes about two to three months. Uh, so you want to try and keep the movement down to as minimum as possible. Um, but I see people heal piercings with them flipped up all the time, no problem, and two months goes by quicker than you think, okay? So if you really want that piercing, it'll be worth the wait. Get it pierced, flip it up, let it heal, and then once it's healed, you can move it as much as you want. It doesn't matter anymore, okay? All right, next one is from Will Co. I was wondering if there's any way to thicken up earlobes that have thinned out. I let my ears sprinkle up as much as they, sprinkle, I think you meant to say shrink up, shrink up as much as they will shrink up from an inch and five eighths to an inch. But other than that, I don't know if there's anything to do. Um, when I used to have stretched ears from my own personal experience and seeing a lot of my colleagues experience, uh, really, you're kind of do, you're kind of going about it the right way so far. Um, you want to let your ears shrink up um, as much as they will and then slowly stretch them up. Take them out, let them shrink up again, slowly stretch them out. Um, you can grow tissue in your earlobes. I mean, unless your ears are just insanely thin and, and, and they're, they're just way too thin to the point of, of no return, uh, for the most part, you can uh, kind of generate more tissue on your earlobes and thicken them up. And that's really gonna come from a lot of just stretching them up, let them shrink, stretch them back up, let them shrink. Um, also that, and then vitamin E oil, um, rub them, massage them with vitamin E oil, I kind of make it uh, a daily thing, a nightly thing. We just kind of massage every night with vitamin E oil for like five, 10 minutes. Um, and the combination of those two things that I know of is probably the best things you can do, okay? So hopefully that helps you out, Will. All right, Valerie Padilla. I got my nipples pierced over a year ago and one of them still hurts and tends to bleed. I do not want to take it out and I've been babying it for months. What can I do to let it heal beautifully like my other one? Thanks. Um, once again, that's another question where I need to see the piercing and I need to see what's going on. Uh, off the top of my head, you know, I would think maybe uh, aftercare could play a factor, um, but more likely it's if your jewelry is too short, um, that could play a factor, or you have cheap metal in there, that could play a factor, or if you have a, a, just a kind of a, a bad piercing. If your piercing was a little, maybe piercing was a little too deep on that side, maybe they kind of went a little bit more into the areola um, instead of just at the base of the nipple. Um, that can be making it a lot harder to heal on that one side for you. So if, you're, if it's possible, go check out a piercer um, that you trust and know in the area and have them take a look at it and see what they think. Um, but it's probably one of those reasons right there, I would say. Our piercers, oh, oh this one, next one is from Elisa K. Our piercers always supposed to pierce the cartilage part of your ear. For example, your conch with a stud. Because when I was getting my conch pierced, the guy told me putting a ring in it was fine. It was a big one. But I ended up getting keloids several times because the ring would get caught in everything and it would rub against a blanket and so and so forth. So is it better to get pierced with a stud? Um, yes, always. For any piercing, it's always better to get pierced with a stud slash barbell, okay? Um, but with that being said, um, I think your piercer was totally um, in, the, in, the, in the okay or, or totally did a good job by putting a ring in there and putting a bigger ring. Um, that's normal. I do it all the time. I do it a lot, actually, at our shop. Uh, for the conches, you know, a lot of that, the, the keloidy, I mean, it's hard to say. Once again, I gotta see the piercing. Um, but unless it was like a bad angle or placement, um, maybe you just slept on it too much. Um, maybe your aftercare wasn't on point. Um, you know, it's gotta be one of those things. Um, but it sounds like your piercer, you know, he, he pointed in the right direction. You know, he told you the correct information. Um, after that, who knows what happened. Um, but if you want, take that ring out, put in a stud, try and heal up those bumps. And, uh, and then you can always put the ring back in there later on, okay? All right, this Shandy XO says, I got a second nostril piercing. One on left, one on right, November. This one is a hoop. It's now February and I have a keloid piercing bump that I've had since December. It will not go away. I've not touched it, rotated or snagged it, etc. I've not used anything harsh, damaging to aid in healing it. At first, I only used HG Ocean spray once per day. Then I started using sea salt soak once per day starting in January. I've also tried tea tree oil once per week, only on the bump. It is driving me crazy. It won't go away. Just when it gets small, I think it's going away, then it comes back. Please help. Okay, well, first off, probably the hoop is your problem. Um, switch that hoop out, put in a stud, okay? Uh, the hoops just are really hard to heal with nostril piercings. Um, for whatever reason, they just get bumped and not too much. Also, when your nose swells, it kind of bends that cartilage. 
and just causes a lot of uh, trauma and irritation, which could lead to those keloid bumps that you're getting. Um, switch it to a stud and just keep doing the saltwater soaks. That's really the only thing you can do. Um, aside from that, you know, if they're still not going away, then maybe you just gotta pull it and let it heal and redo it again, okay? Um, once again, it's just another one of those periods I gotta see in person, but the, the first place to start uh, would be to switch it to a stud, okay? So it sounds like everything else you're doing okay, just switch that thing to a stud and hopefully that can clear it for you. But aside from that, if you wanna get into the mumbo jumbo, there is such thing as a double nostril piercing curse. And for whatever reason, whenever you get two nostril piercings, whether it's one on each side or one on, two on both sides, uh, you're just always gonna be battling keloids for whatever reason, okay? So the curse is real, all right? So, next one is from Milker Aslan. So I'm starting to stretch my second hole in my earlobe, starting with a 12 gauge. I'm stretching to a two gauge, which will take a while. Is it normal for an itching sensation to occur while stretching your ears? Um, yeah, totally. Uh, I mean, if it's itching a lot, you know, maybe you got some buildup in there, you can always take the jewelry out and clean it. Um, I wouldn't take it out, you know, any sooner than a, than a week after stretching. Uh, but after that, take it out and clean it. Um, but you know, if you have scar tissue in there, scar tissue tends to be a little itchy. Um, that'd be causing the itchy also, itchiness also, okay? Um, but I would just say take your jewelry out after a week of stretching and clean it. And just keep it nice and clean. It's probably what's going on, just got some buildup in there. Um, no big deal. But eventually that'll all go away. Alright. Just that Joe guy. He says, I live in Virginia and I watched your video on how to become a professional piercer. A lot of classes you talked about are not offered locally, so there'd be a huge expense to travel somewhere to take classes. Totally worth it in my opinion. My question is, do you believe a chubby nerdy guy would be able to be a successful professional piercer? I'm not exactly cool, more so nerdy. I'm reluctant to switch career paths if I'm unlikely to become successful. Oh man, Joe guy. Um, dude, there's no reason why you couldn't become a successful piercer. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm the biggest nerd on the planet and I'm doing it. How, I, I don't know, but I'm pulling it off somehow. Uh, yeah, man, if that's something you want to do, pursue it. I mean, it's definitely cheaper than going to college or anything like that. And if you're unhappy in the career you're doing right now, I mean, we only got one shot this life, so why not, dude? I would do it. Like, I mean, I did do it. Uh, but yeah, man, go for it, dude. Like, those classes, they sound pricey and expensive, but, you know, a lot of those classes are in Las Vegas. And even from Virginia, flights to Las Vegas are super, super cheap. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just go for it, man. What do you got to lose? You know, uh, it's fun. You'll love it. You won't ever regret it. You might look back and, and regret not doing it, but you won't regret doing it. And it's a lot cheaper than going to college. Uh, so go for it, dude. Like, you can do it. Like, there's no reason why you can't. Uh, some of the biggest nerds I know are in this piercing industry. So uh, yeah, you got this. All right, next one is from Ivy Ritter. I've had my adjuster for a year and a half. and these past two months, I've noticed a bump right up against the bar on the cartilage and it won't go away. Think it's a keloid? How do I treat it? Um, I don't know. I'd have to see it in person. Uh, how to get that thing to go away? Uh, there's no, there's no real answer to that. You know, trying to sleep on it, trying to bump it and knock it. Definitely do the saltwater soaks. Um, if it's just not, not getting any better, uh, it could be the angle, it could be the way it's pierced. Um, but you can always try and put two separate bars in there and let it kind of clear up and go away and finish healing with the two separate bars. And then once that goes away, you can switch out over to the, uh, the single bar again and reconnect them again, okay? All right, Valerie Gilbert. I got my belly button pierced about three months ago now, and I think it's pretty healed up, but I had a blood blister formed by the bottom bead that won't seem to go away. Should I take it, away? Should I take it out? Um, Valerie, no, I wouldn't take it out. I would just keep doing your saltwater soaks. Um, you're gonna have lots of ups and downs with it during the healing process. Um, you're only three months in, uh, belly buttons or navels take about six to eight months to heal. So leave it in there, keep doing the saltwater soaks, and hopefully, you know, um, it should just clear right up eventually and go away. But that's pretty normal for a belly button piercing uh, during the healing process, especially halfway through, okay? All right, uh, Chloe, what would you look for in a piercing apprentice? Do you have any tips for breaking into the industry? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we just put out a whole video on how to get into the industry. Um, so if you go back and look, um, you, can, you can look that up and watch it. Um, but as far as what I'm looking for in a piercing apprentice, it's just somebody who's serious. Uh, you know, if I say, hey, if you go and take some class at ABP, you know, I'll take you serious. And nobody ever says, nobody ever comes back and does that, you know. So if you went and took classes at the ABP gathering um, and you came back in my shop and you were like, hey, I took 10 classes, you know, check this out. I'd be like, wow, this person's really serious, and I'd probably give you an apprenticeship. Um, if you if you went and down and got a 
Bloodborne Pathogen Certified, which you can do online. And you got First Aid CPR Certified, which you can do online. Um, and he came to my shop, I'd be like, wow, this person is taking this serious. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times people came in the shop and I was like, yeah, you know, just, you know, why don't you get Bloodborne Pathogen Certified and First Aid uh, CPR Certified and come back and let's talk. And I can tell you, nobody's ever done it. I don't know why, you know. Um, I think people, a lot of people just want to be handed the apprenticeship. Um, but something as easy as going online and taking a $20 class, people can't seem to figure out. I don't know why. Um, and then APP, it's, it's a really cheap uh, week-long course of, of like a, tons of classes that you can take. That, uh, uh, I mean, it's just a great way to get your foot in the door. And if someone took those classes and came into my shop, man, I would totally take them serious. Um, so that's where I would start. Go take those classes, get first aid, bloodborne pathogen certified, and then go around to the shops that you trust and you know are good shops in your area and talk to them and see what they say. I'll bet you they take you a lot more serious than if you hadn't done those things, okay? All right guys, so next question is from Shanice Fontaine, okay? She says, I had a blowout when I stretched from a nine millimeter to a 10 mill millimeter. I took it out and allowed it to heal. I actually downsized three or four sizes. However, when it was healed, I went up those sizes pretty easily, within a week actually. They just slid in one after another, no pain, no resistance or anything. How is that so? Um, I've always been told, and I, I'm not a scientist, I don't know anything, any, anything about anything, but I've always been told by other colleagues in the industry that, you know, the skin kind of has memory. And once again, we're using Lehman's terms here. It doesn't actually technically have memory, but what we call it is memory. And when you stretch your ears up and they shrink up, um, your ears just shrink up really fast. Uh, maybe that's because you're, you've already generated more, more tissue at that bigger size, and the tissue's still there, it's just shrunk up a little bit. Um, so you're not having to grow more tissue, you're just kind of literally stretching it. Uh, so yeah, that's totally possible, that's totally a thing. Um, as long as you didn't tear or, or cause any damage when you stretched up fast within that week, back to your old size, then you're totally safe and you're totally fine. Um, yeah, you know, that's awesome. I'm glad it worked out that easy for you. Um, cool. Next one is from Celine Ryan. Um, she says, I got both of my third lobe piercings done literally a year and a half ago, and they're still acting up from time to time. It is like they're never healing. Am I doing something wrong? Um, once again, you know, I've said this a few other times, I'd have to see the piercings in person to be able to know exactly what's going on. But um, yeah, that is still a thing, or that is totally a thing. I mean, if you have really cheap jewelry in there, maybe your body's in a constant state of reaction, and it's not healing up because of that. Um, so. Maybe make sure you have like a titanium. I would just switch to titanium and that kind of eliminates any factors of it being the metal um, and see what they do. Um, maybe start doing saltwater soaks again after you switch to that titanium. And uh, you know, the only other thing would be maybe if your angles are really bad or the piercings are really wonky, um, but usually it's a metal thing. So try putting titanium in there and see how they do. Um, and then also on top of that, after you got the titanium in there, make sure you're doing the saltwater soaks until it finally clears up. Um, yeah, that might be your problem, um, but that's just a guess because I can't see it in person, okay? All right, Cheyenne Young. <laughs> He's less creepy with a shaved head. <laughs> Great, thanks Cheyenne. <laughs> um, Cat Lee, first question. So I got my nipples pierced two months ago, and since then I've gotten bumps filled with pus and blood. They drain when I soak them, but they won't go away and keep filling with pus. I soak them one to two times a day. I use sand moon wash, tea tree, and chamomile tea compresses. What am I doing wrong? Are they infected? Um, second question, you say don't use Q-tips, but that's what I've been doing. What's the best way to remove pus and crust after the soaks? I feel like if I leave it, it'll harden again. Okay, so let's answer that first question first, okay? Um, so, you wanna be doing the saltwater soaks for sure, okay? Um, those bumps, you know, they could be from a few different things. Um, so saltwater soaks are going to help them go away the best. Uh, you know, if your piercings are too deep, that could be a problem. Like maybe you're, they're pierced too far into the areola. The piercing should be just right at the base of the nipple, okay? Um, also, if they're getting bumped and moved a lot, um, that could be a problem also, okay? So make sure you're keeping the movement down to a minimum, all right? Um, actually, no movement at all. So make sure you're not twisting or spinning or, or rotating the bars. Uh, but other than that, I would really have to see them in person to know exactly. But Usually, it's from being pierced too deep. Um, I'm not saying that's your case, but that's usually the case. Uh, you know, also, your nipples just might be going through a funky healing stage, you know? That's totally uh, possible also. So, 
Uh, second question, you say don't use Q-tips, but that's what I've been doing. Okay, definitely don't use Q-tips on there because that could also be a, a cause of the problems. Those fibers can be wrapped around the bar, even though you can't see them, they're there, and those can be causing those, those, those bumps, okay? And actually, after reading your second question, that could be the cause of your problem right there. Uh, so, no more Q-tips, okay? If you need to wipe away anything afterwards, take a paper towel, fold it up, get that corner wet, and you can wipe away that. The paper towel won't leave uh, behind any like little Q-tip fibers or, or anything like that that's gonna cause those problems, okay? Third question, last question. Is it bad that the barbell slides around a lot? I wake up and the ball will be pushed all the way into my nipple. I feel like the ball is suffocating my piercing when it does that. Do I need to switch to a shorter bar so it won't slide around? Um, yeah, it is bad that the bar slides around a lot um, and it shouldn't be going into your nipple. Uh, man, it sounds, usually when something goes into your nipple, this is a weird question to answer, to, to answer because usually when, it, when the bar goes into your nipple, it's because the bar is too short, but you're saying it slides around a lot, meaning maybe it's too long. Um, man, I would go see a pierce in your area that can take a look at them and really give you a, a more direct answer. Um, I really would have to see those things in person, okay? But without seeing them, all I'm gonna say is uh, if, the bar, if the bar feels like it's, it's not too short, you know, then just keep doing your saltwater soaks. Um, but maybe those things are too deep, okay? So, yeah, Kat, uh, just go see a pierce in your area. You know, it sounds like you got a whole bunch of things going on there and they need to be checked out, okay? Cool, you guys, so that wraps up all the questions there. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for watching this video once again. I know it's a long one, but I just wanna make sure I answered everybody's questions. Um, we're gonna try and do this again for you in, in another week or two, so if you have another question, go ahead and leave it below in, in the comment section and I will definitely make sure to get to that for you, okay, guys? Um, thanks again for watching as always and we'll see you guys next video.